Hey y'all, Coach in the Fight here, your friendly neighborhood bookworm, looking in Revelation chapter 6. Yep, we're talking about the seven seals. Finally, the scripture tells us what the seven seals are. Now there's a lot of speculation on what the seven seals are. A lot of people guessing, a lot of people moosing, meaning they're making up stuff about what the seven seals are. Because the King James Version of the Bible never really told us what the seven seals are. We don't hear about them until we get to Revelations. And Revelations chapter 6 starts telling us about these seven seals. But before that, we don't hear about any seals at all in the Bible. And one thing that I've learned over my 25 plus years of being a Bible bookworm is that these seven seals seem to take place in everything we do. It seems like everything you do has something to do with these seven seals. It seems like everything we do follows this seven seal pattern. I mean, take, for instance, if you was to buy a car. The moment you decide to buy a car, that's equivalent to the white seal. That's equivalent to uh, the conquering and to conquer because the decision has been made that you're going to buy a car. And then all of a sudden you've made the decision. Now you got to get up and you actually got to go do something. You got to go down to the car lot. You got to look at cars. That's red. That's the, the piece being taken away. Whereas before you were sitting on the couch watching television about cars, now you're walking around the parking lot. You go on in the store, you've decided which car you're going to buy, and you've picked out the car. And guess what you got to go do next? You got to go talk to that man in the, in the office there and talk about financing this car and how you're going to pay for this car. That's black. That's the third seal being opened as far as you buying this car is now you have to actually pay for this car. OK, now once you've paid for the car and you you're sitting there, what happens next? Buyer's remorse. Yep, here comes the fourth seal where you have to actually think about the fact that you've actually just spent all of this money on this car and whether or not it was the right thing, whether or not it was the right car, whether or not you should have financed it that way and all of these thoughts start to take place. And then the next stage in the process is the fifth seal, which is waiting. So you're sitting there in the in the in the little showroom there by yourself, of course, and you're watching people as they're shopping for cars and you're waiting for them to bring your particular car around that you just purchased. That's the waiting process. That's the fifth seal. All right, so here comes your shiny car, comes around the corner after they done polished it up and all of that, and you're getting ready to open the sixth seal as they put the keys in your hand, and you don't quite know what to do with it. You know, you want to jump in it, want to walk around it. You're getting that feeling that it's, is, is it really my car and all of this? That's the sixth seal being opened right there. Then finally, you take the keys, you jump in the car, and you drive off, and now it's to your car now. That is the seventh seal being opened, guys. It seems like this happens in everything we do. Pay attention to it. Watch things as they take place. You'll notice that it all follows this seven seal pattern. It seems like everything in life follows this seven seal pattern, which explains why so many people think they're seeing the seven seals of revelations being opened all throughout history. Some believe they've been opened in the last year. Some believe they've been open in the last decade. Some believe they've been open in the last century. Some believe they've been open in the last millennium. People are all over the place about these seven seals. And again, I say it's because the scripture never tells us what the seven seals are until now. Introducing the third testament of the Bible. Turns out we have a third testament of the Bible. Some of you guys have heard of it. Those that have followed our channel have heard a lot about the third testament of the Bible as we do classes on the third testament of the Bible. And some of you other guys have heard about the third testament of the Bible because there is a audio book on YouTube and a PDF file that you can find over there at JesusComes.com that talks about the third testament of the Bible. There's even a hard copy version of it, turns out, about the third testament of the Bible, the third part of the trilogy. You have the Old Testament, you have the New Testament, and if you know anything about numerology, you know there should have been three parts to this thing. You have the third testament of the Bible, which is spirit and truth, the revelations of Jesus Christ. And way up here in chapter 38 of the third testament of the Bible, we find out what the seven seals are. 
chapter 38 there are 65 chapters in this testament total and chapter 38 is entitled the three divine revelations and the seven seals Yep, the three divine revelations is talking about the the Old Testament, the New Testament and the Third Testament telling us why we had to have three parts to this book. The first part was given by Moses, which gave us the law. The second part was given by Jesus, which gave us love. And we have the third part, which is given by Elijah, which gives us light or wisdom, the spirit and truth that we've all been waiting for. This book is like unlocking all kinds of secrets, guys, including where we go after we die, how telepathy works. It tells us about the power of prayer and how we and have you ever been wondering why all these TV evangelists and stuff been trying to heal people and, and seems like it's all been fakery and stuff. Well, if they read the third testament of the Bible, they'll learn how to heal people for real. This thing is unlocking all kinds of truths, guys. And here today, we're going to unlock the seven seals. Yep, we're going to tell you exactly what the seven seals are of Revelations. And I'm going to try to explain it to you uh, using the time chart history of the world. Right? I have this hard copy book on my shelf. I couldn't find any images of it on anywhere online so I had to go ahead and take some pictures of them and we're going to use it just to give us a little bit of help in understanding what the seven seals are because they're not as simple as you would think they are they are a little bit complicated now I'm not saying that I understand all of it I do understand a little bit of it but we have enough documents here I have enough proof here to where people who who are studying the seven seals should give you some ideas some stuff that maybe you can run with and if you create a video on and give me a link because I'd like to see what you come up with and feel free to leave your comments below or as, as if I leave if I miss anything or if I leave anything out or if, if you think I need correction in any kind of way just go ahead and put that in the comments below we're open to it like I said I'm not one to believe I don't believe I know everything but I believe I know a little bit and I'm going to share that little bit with you right here all right, so let's get started. Jumping over here to Revelations chapter 6, in verse 1, he says, And I saw when the Lamb had opened one of the seals, and I heard, as it were the noise of thunder, one of the four beasts saying, Come and see. And I saw, and behold, a white horse, and he that sat on him had a bow, and a crown was given unto him, and he went forth conquering and to conquer. There's a lot of speculation on what this first seal is, guys. There's a lot of people who believe that it's our current world leaders. There's a lot of people who believe that this gentleman riding this white horse is one of our current world leaders. There's a lot of people that believe it has something to do with the Catholic Church or the Pope. There's a lot of people who, who well, people are just all over the place as far as these seals at. And like I said, it's because up until now, the scripture never told us what they are. But let's come over here to the third testament of the Bible and let's read exactly what this seal is. All right, we're looking at the third testament of the Bible. We've got to come all the way down here to verse 45. He says, and the first of these phases of spiritual evolution in the world is represented by Abel, the first minister of the father who offered his sacrifice to God. He is the symbol of sacrifice and we rose up against him. There you have the, the first seal goes all the way back to Abel as our first minister. Now, bear with me. You know, I've been through this. I've, I've, I've worked this out. Like I said, it, it is a little bit complicated wrapping our minds around how is the first seal going all the way back to Abel. Right now, it's going to make sense as we go along. And I wish I had brought some more documents to to bring this story out. Maybe I could have brought out the book of Adam and Eve or maybe I could have brought out some of Enoch stuff or maybe the book of Jasher or maybe the book of Jubilees, which we are familiar with over here at Hermes Academy. But we're going to try to keep this one as short as possible. And we're just going to talk about ha what happened there during this period of time. I am going to come over here and use one more document, and that is the World Seven Great Crisis by, this is a chart written by a gentleman named Clarence Larkin about a hundred years ago in his book, Dispensational Truth. Um, 
he did write this a hundred years ago and he he did not quite have an understanding of things as we do today in other words he's got a few errors in here but we're going to use his chart too and as we try to unlock this all right now what this chart is talking about is the seven crises or the seven crises that has happened over time uh, looking at all of them here and he does pretty good until he gets over into this area over here and we'll we'll uh, try to straighten some of it out or maybe we'll just ignore it but coming over here at first he did a real good job getting over here into the antediluvian period or that period that happened after the Garden of Eden all right, so this is how this is working. Like I said, we spent a lot of time trying to figure this out and trying to understand this out, uh, trying to understand this. And when he said that the first period was with Abel, the period that he's talking about was the time between the time that Abel was born and the next period here. This is the whole first seal period during this area here. All right. And that's what makes it a little bit confusing is because when we when we look at it and we say that it was Abel, we kind of want to think that everything happened right there when Abel would have been born. And no, it actually happened throughout the time uh, from the time Abel was born all the way up until the next seal was open. And we're going to find out in a minute that the next seal was open with Noah. All right, let's go back to Reve let's go back to Revelations. It says, and I saw and behold a white horse and he that sat on him had a bow and a crown was given unto him and he went forth conquering and to conquer. Now to understand this, like I said, I wish I had brought out Enoch, which starts to tell us about the fallen angels, because what we learn in that story about the fallen angels is was that it was these these angels who had came down and saw the uh, women that were on the planet, saw the human women, fell in love with them, decided to walk out of heaven, come down to earth and marry these women. And actually, they had children by these women. Well, another thing that they did was they taught them uh, how to make weapons. They taught them how to make war. They taught them how to make bows. They taught them how to kill people during this time. Now, their children, you know, you heard of Nephilim or the giants that were created there in Genesis chapter six. These guys went on to make themselves kings. They were the first kings of the planet. And that's where these crowns would have come in is because these guys set themselves up. They were they were giants and they set themselves up as kings in that in that era. This had never really taken place before this seal was open. There was no bows. There was no killing. There was no conquering or anything like that before this seal was open. And this all took place during that period between the first and the second seal being opened. All right. Like I said, it's going to it's going to get a little bit easier as we progress through time. But let's go on to the next seal. Verse three says, and when he had opened the second seal, I heard a beast say, come and see. And there went out another horse that was red and power was given to him that sat thereon to take peace from the earth and that they should kill one another. And there was given unto him a great sword. All right. Now, like we said, we're going to come over here and another document we're going to use is time chart history of the world. Now, what this does is it shows all of the history of the world starting right here with Adam and Eve in the garden. I don't know if you've seen these books. They're really huge books um, that cover a lot of stuff. Let me flip through it right quick to show you where you kind of see uh, all of the, the stuff taking place here. It, there's the uh, Tower of Babel over here. During, um, there's the, the flood there with Noah and his three sons that got off the boat. That's why you only see this part up here because those were the only people um, that you know survived the flood. These eight people that got off this boat here. But you see they immediately started over in this this area here with the Tower of Babel and Nimrod and it keeps on going where you see all these people groups splitting up you have Egypt in here you have uh, Nebuchadnezzar in here you have all of this stuff going on I 
I think Nebuchadnezzar is actually right here. You have the Roman Empire. You have the 12 or the 10 toes that split off of that group there. This is the time chart of human history here, and it covers all through history, all the way up to Obama and Putin, matter of fact. But let's come all the way back over here, all the way back here to uh, what well, we already talked about Abel. Abel would have been born in this area. And here you would have had the people on the holy mountain. Like I said, I wish I had brought out the, the book of Adam and Eve where you hear about the holy mountain and how all these people dwelt on the holy mountain while Cain seed was down in, the, down in the valley making all of these babies and such. But it was during this period where you had Enoch who was talking to the righteous angels who was teaching him how to write and he ended up writing all of those books that he wrote. But at the same time, you had those fallen angels that was teaching him how to make war. It was teaching them how to uh, make abortions and teaching them about uh, horoscopes and all kinds of stuff. These fallen angels were teaching, man, some of that information they was never supposed to learn at all. But then we come all the way up here to the second seal, which is going to be up in this area right here with Noah. All right, let's jump back over here to the third testament of the Bible. And let's read about the second seal. It says the second stage was represented by Noah. He is the symbol of faith. He constructed the ark from divine inspiration and led men into it to reach salvation. Against him, the multitudes railed with doubt, mockery and the paganism of their spirits. Yet Noah left his seed of faith. The second seal started with Noah. That would be the time period with Noah. We find out that the third one is Jacob. All right. The first seal ended with the flood. And that's one thing we have to note is how the the each one of these seals when they are closed is when you have a huge event or back over here at the beginning. There was not a huge crisis event other than them being kicked out of the garden that kind of started the, the I guess it was a crisis event where they were kicked out of the garden. But over here during the flood is when you have a a earth touching event, something that actually affected all of humanity over here in the flood all right so coming over here to the next one where you have the second seal which is between Noah and and Jacob over here all right now this is this you we're using this chart just for illustration is it doesn't really match what what it is that we're doing but it kind of gives the best illustration I could come up with on the fly but we see that the the next crisis period would have been from the flood period all the way up to the time when the people went into Egypt if you remember the story, um, how they ended up in Egypt, it was because there was a worldwide famine. Something went on in the world that had Jacob's 12 sons to have to go into Egypt there. All right. Now, coming back over to Revelations, we look at when you have the red horse coming on the scene, you see that it is taking peace from the world. And power was given to him that sat there on to take peace from the earth and that they should kill one another. And there was given unto him a great sword. Well, coming over into this period here between the time of Noah and the time of Jacob, which is on the next page over here. You don't get to Jacob until you over here in this area here. During this period here, you have. Let's see if I can blow it up because I can't really see it. You have all of these warlike dynasties being created. You know, all of these people are 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 tending to um, uh, fight each other and and wars and stuff are starting to take place all throughout the whole world. You have places like Greece being born. You have the Chaldeans being born in this time period. You have. All of these dynasties been coming about during this time period. Assyria is born during this time period. This is the time when peace has been taken from the world. Where the world becomes a place of war. Where people fight during this time period. 
Whereas before it was, you know, the, the, the giants there, they really, the giants that ruled, you know, before that, they wasn't really so much as into killing people as they were into eating people. You know, they really just killed people because they was hungry and the people wasn't making food fast enough. And when they ran out of food, they started eating people, which caused the, the worldwide flood to actually kill off all of the giants and all of the wicked people. And pretty much everybody on the planet except Noah and his children. But it's during this time that people actually start to make war. It's during this time that peace is actually being taken away from the world. All right. So it was during this time from Noah all the way up to Jacob that we have the second seal. Now, the, the, the first seal ended with the flood, the worldwide flood, whereas the second seal is ending with some worldwide famine that's forcing Jacob and his children into Egypt. All right. So let's go on to the next stage. Coming down here to verse five, it says and when he had opened the third seal, I heard the third beast say, come and see. And I beheld and lo, a black horse. And he that sat on him had a pair of balances in his hand. And I heard a voice in the midst of the four beasts say a measure of wheat for a penny and three measures of barley for a penny. And see thou hurt not the oil and the wine. This is the first time in human history that people actually had to pay to eat. Before then, Jacob and his bunch, Abraham and, and, and Abraham, Isaac and Jacob and pretty much everybody else on the planet survived on growing their own food and everything themselves. Nobody purchased food before during that before that period. This is why our money and stuff has all of these Egyptian symbols on it and stuff like that. It's be, and that's why they call America the new Egypt or whatever. It's because we are still following these Egyptian principles even today. Even today, people are still having to uh, use that same type of buying and selling that was created there in the third seal. That's why it says a measure of wheat for a penny and a measure of barley for a penny is because people all of a sudden have to buy and have to buy and purchase food to eat. And where it says to hurt not the oil and the wine, that is because they stopped doing the feast during the time that they were in Egypt. The wine was associated with Passover. And if you remember, they didn't start doing it again until they was actually ready to exit Egypt. And the oil reminds me of the festival of oil that you have around first fruits. All right, let's come over here to the third testament of the Bible. It says right here in 46 slash two, he says the third stage is represented by Jacob. He symbolizes strength. He is Israel, the strong spiritually. He saw the ladder by which all of you will ascend to sit at the right hand of the creator. The angel of the Lord rose up to test his strength and perseverance. So right there we find that the third stage of this thing is Jacob. All right. So that will fall in this area here where you have Abraham, Isaac and Jacob all the way up to the Egyptian crisis. We're going to find out here in a second that the that the next the next uh, stage started with Moses. So between Jacob and Moses. Uh, the father seed in particular had to start paying to eat. And you can remember that the Bible that's really what the Bible is about, especially back in the Old Testament. It was about the history of the father seed. Now, not so much about what was going on in the rest of the whole world. You know, we don't hear much about this Chinese dynasty in the Bible. We don't hear much about all these other areas in the Bible until they start having an effect on the father seed who are way up here in this group. But in this but doing that time time period they all of a sudden have to start paying to eat 
Never in history has 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 mankind had to pay to eat before that seal was opened and we still do today. And that's one thing that should be noted about these seals is the things that they brought about never went away. We still have bows. We still have people that are conquering. We still have uh, uh, these these um, we still having to pay to eat or this famine kind of scenario or this or this buying and, and selling of food kind of scenario and we still have war and stuff that's going on they, they'll never close until the seventh seal all right well let's go on I believe we covered enough on that one coming down here to verse 7 he says and when he had opened the fourth seal I heard the voice of the fourth beast say come and see and I looked and behold a pale horse and his name that sat on him was death and hell followed with him and power was given unto them over the fourth part of the earth to kill with the sword and with hunger and with death and with the beasts of the earth all right so let's come over here and see what that is all about. That jumps us all the way down here to verse 47 in the third testament of the Bible. He says the fourth is symbolized by Moses. He represents the law. He represents the tablets wherein it was written for the humanity of the times. It was he who with his immense faith rescued the people to lead them on the road of salvation to the promised land. He is symbolized by the law talking about Moses. So coming over here, we'll see that the fourth seal opened with Moses and the fourth seal lasts from Moses this time. And we're going to find out in a minute that the fifth seal is going to be the Messiah. So that period lasted all the way up during this time period here from Moses to the Messiah. Now coming over here to our time chart. We have Moses in this area here. I believe this is Moses being born up in here after they've spent about a hundred and some years in in uh, Egypt there. So from Moses right here all the way up to the Christ, which goes all the way through to over here, we have the fourth seal. Now, during this time, you have a bunch of stuff going on during this time. Now, it, what is what does what does Revelation say? You got uh, death and hell followed him. He said and power was given unto them over the fourth part of the earth to kill with the sword and with hunger and with death and with the beasts of the earth. Yeah, all of this stuff was going on during that time period. All right. During this time, you have the rise of Babylon there. Again, you have the, the people leaving Egypt. So there's a lot going on there. This is the time period where you had the judges, which includes Samuel and and um, Samson and those guys having a war with the with the, the Persians and all of that stuff. You have Nebuchadnezzar going on in this area right in here, you know. And remember that he was conquered over in this area over here. So there's a there's a lot going on as far as world domination. You remember that the Egyptians, they never really went out and tried to conquer the world or anything. It was so much that, you know, they got their fame because, uh, first of all, Pharaoh uh, was an undertaker and he learned to make people pay for being buried and stuff. That's how he made the country rich was, you know, all of a sudden people had to pay to be buried paid to die they had to pay to be buried you know and stuff and they had to uh, pay for food but they didn't actually go off and try to kill anybody during that time period talking about the Egyptian period over in this area they wasn't trying to be world domination going on over here but then after Moses was born here and on going forward it seems like the whole world went into this world domination mode like I said you have Babylon you got the Persian Empire in this area right here. And see, in this in this time chart, you see how all these areas are getting bigger? Like this area is getting bigger right here? It's because they're dominating other parts of the world. They're, they're actually, you know, conquering. They're actually, you know, making war with these other countries and, you know, killing them and, you know, making them, you know, 
part of their nation or whatever. And that's that's remember, that's what Nebuchadnezzar did over there was, you know, to in order to sack Jerusalem, he basically starved them out for over a year. And that's where and that's where Revelations is talking about when he says, uh, uh, with hunger, yeah, they will start learn to starve people out. They built a, a wall all the way around Jerusalem and people couldn't go out and people couldn't come in and basically starve these people for over a year before he went in and just, you know, before he went in and, and, and did what he wanted to do with that nation. Down in here, you have the beginning of the Roman Republic down in here. So you got some domination. You got some killing that's going on over in there during this time. You have Cappadocia and Asia and uh, Ptolemy is in this time period. And all of this stuff going on during this time period in here. Now, like we said a few minutes ago, remember, at the end of these crises, there's always something that comes in and affects the world. At the end of uh, Jacob's period, there was a world famine that forced the people into Egypt there. And then at the end of you, you remember that when the Messiah was put on the cross and he was killed during that time period, there was a huge earthquake that ripped the temple veil and did some other stuff that that ended the period that, that was started by Moses. There's always some type of of uh, catastrophe or or earthquake or famine or something coming from out of space or all of the plagues like over there in Egyptian time when we ended the Jacob period. You had all of those 10 plagues that affected the world or whatever. There's always some big world event or world catastrophe that goes on at the end of these. All right. So let's go on. Verse nine says. And when he had opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of them that were slain for the word of God and for the testimony which they held. And they cried with a loud voice, saying, How long, O Lord, holy and true, does thou not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth? All right. Now, all of a sudden, we have the killing of the saints. Starting here with the Messiah being born right here all the way up to now. This is where, like I said, this chart wasn't really made for this. And it, it, it and it's kind of following some of a little pattern here. But all the way starting from the Christ all the way up to we're going to find out the next stage, the six seal stage. You had people all of a sudden, the Hebrew people, the 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 father's chosen seed, all of a sudden were being slaughtered. All of a sudden, they were being slaughtered by these Romans right here. Now, now going back in time, when you had Nebuchadnezzar and you had, you know, all of these other stuff. If you remember the story of, of why Nebuchadnezzar came in and sacked Jerusalem anyway, it was because Jerusalem actually had a unlawful king. They had a wicked king that was ruling the nation at that time. And he was already doing some stuff that he wasn't supposed to be doing. And he was under the... Um, he was a subject of Nebuchadnezzar, so he was supposed to have been obeying Nebuchadnezzar, but then he, 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 he rebelled against Nebuchadnezzar, and Nebuchadnezzar gave him a warning the first time, but the dude came back and did it again, and that's when Nebuchadnezzar came in and taught him a lesson. He came in and just said, okay, you're not going to behave, Mr. Jerusalem, and he basically uh, uh, destroyed the whole town. He destroyed Jerusalem, destroyed the temple, brought all of the people into Babylon as slaves or whatever, made slaves out of them. But notice he wasn't just slaughtering them just to be slaughtering them until... We don't really get slaughtering to be slaughtering until we get over into the Roman time period where there was kind of like a Holocaust thing going on where they were just exterminating people. That's what all of those crossing deal was about back there in Jesus's time is they was using them like gas, like Hitler used gas chambers. This was the way they was actually exterminating the Hebrews. They were exterminating the Jews there. That's one of the reasons why the Messiah had to go on the cross was to stop some of that from going on. This was a this was a holocaust of the Israelite people. And that's what went on starting with your starting with Yahushua HaMashiach all the way up through the next seal that's going to be open here as you have all of the death, the slaughtering of the people. And like I said, it had never taken place before. You had wars and stuff going on. You had skirmishes and stuff, but there wasn't any hum there wasn't any genocide going on. People just going in just to kill people just to, you know, kill them. 
except you know what Joshua and those guys were doing. But we're talking about the you know killing of the 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 holy seed. There, remember, it's about the holy seed and the the the. The chosen seed hadn't been slaughtered until we get up into this point here where they actually start killing them, just start destroying them. Mass, mass genocide trying to annihilate that race and it's actually been going on ever since. Starting back here in this time period, that's actually what's been going on ever since. It's actually still going on today, whether in these third world countries, where they're trying to eliminate any traces of this holy seed. Now, they use other stuff besides killing them these days. They're using, you know, uh, stuff like a simulation where they're kind of um, making them, you know, breed with other, you know, Making them mix, mix races and different stuff, um, and making them worship other gods and all kinds of other stuff. There's not just you know uh, killing going on these days, but the, from the time of the fifth seal until the time of the sixth seal, that's what you have there. Now let's come over here and read in verse 48. It says the fifth stage is represented by Jesus, the divine word, the sacrificial lamb. He who has spoken to you in all times and who will continue speaking to you. He is love for he was made man to inhabit the dwelling places of man to suffer their pains to show humanity the path of sacrifice love and charity by which it must achieve redemption from all their sins he came as master to teach to be born as part of humanity to live in love to achieve the sacrifice and to die loving forgiving and blessing he represents the fifth stage and his symbol is love. All right. So that's the period. That's the period of the fifth stage. And it started there with his birth. And it ended there with some type of world, ca world catastrophe that if you look through history, you'll you can find out. All right. Now, let's go on to the next seal. Now, this one, it should start to get really interesting because this is actually the seal that we're in. Anybody that's paying attention knows that we're in the sixth seal. We're actually going to go ahead and prove it right now. Looking at verse 12, he says, and I beheld and when he had opened the sixth seal and lo, there was a great earthquake and the sun became black as sackcloth of hair and the moon became as blood. And the stars of heaven fell unto the earth, even as a fig casteth her untimely figs, when she is shaken of a mighty wind. And the heaven departed as a scroll when it is rolled together, and every mountain and island were moved out of their places. Talking about this worldwide earthquake that were expected to happen during the sixth seal. And this is this this is why we're doing this class over here is because we're finally getting an understanding of how this is working. There's plenty of people that will say that we're in the sixth seal, but it comes off a little bit confusing because you're wondering, okay, well, where is these earthquakes? Where is this sun turning black? Where is this moon turning to blood? Where where is all of these stars falling out of heaven? They're like a meteor shower that's pelting the earth. Where are these kings running and all of this stuff that's supposed to happen from the sixth seal well remembering over here where we was looking at this chart and how these events these major catastrophic events happened at the end of the seals it was the end of the first seal that you had a worldwide flood the event happened at the end even though the next seal was open with Noah, you didn't have a you didn't have the catastrophic event until Jacob's time and forced and forced the 12 tribes of Israel into Egypt. The sixth stage is represented by Elijah called Elias in the New Testament. He is the symbol of the Holy Spirit. It is he who goes on his chariot of fire bearing light to all nations and all the worlds that are unknown to you but known to me for I am the father of all the worlds and all the creatures this is the stage in which you are living that is of Elijah that of Elijah it is his light that illuminates you he represents the teachings that were hidden but that are being revealed to mankind in this era all right, so this is is clearly telling us now that this is the stage that we're living in right now with Elijah. 
This individual, this if you know anything about Elijah, you know that he was one of the two individuals that never died. He was translated. And when you go back over and lead, read the last verse of the Old Testament, you find out that Elijah is supposed to return. You find out over there in 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 uh in the Gospels they were telling them that Elijah was supposed to return as well. You you know throughout the Old Testament and the New Testament that there's something supposed to happen in the end times dealing with Elijah. Well, we find out that he is actually the leader of the sixth seal. It's him bringing in the sixth seal. Whereas Moses brought in the fourth seal. Jesus brought in the fifth seal. It is Elijah that's bringing in the sixth seal. Now, like I said, I don't have all of the details. So I don't know what catastrophic event happened over there during that time. But we see in 1866 is when this Elijah was actually, this Elijah period was born there was in 1866. The 1st of September, 1866, and that's really talking about uh, the first day of the seventh month, talking about the memorial blowing the trumpets there. But he says, was the birth of the new era, the dawn of the new day, the third era, which was open before humanity, talking about the sixth seal being opened there with Elijah. And if somebody wanted to go in and study, they would be able to find some type of catastrophic event that happened during that time period. There was some earthquakes that went on in, in America there. There was, you know, a bunch of stuff that happened during that time period, but I can't say I can nail down what exact world catastrophic event happened there as the fifth seal closed and as the sixth seal opened. But what I can tell you is what's going to happen when the sixth seal closes and that's these events that you see over here in Revelations. And this should clear up a lot of the confusion. I, like I said, I don't know everything. But this should bring a lot of understanding to this sixth seal when we understand that we, aren't ex we weren't expecting these events to happen at the beginning of the sixth seal or in the middle of the sixth seal. But we are expecting these events to happen at the end of the sixth seal. Talking about earthquakes and the sun being stricken and the moon being stricken and some type of meteor shower. What it says, um... Uh, the stars of heaven fall into earth like figs falling out of a tree. All of these events are going to happen at the end of the sixth seal. And that's really why I want to do this class is because this is extremely important to understand. We're all waiting for this huge global earthquake to happen. We're trying to get an understanding on this. Well, this happens at the end of the sixth seal is when we're expecting these events to take place. And the kings of the earth and the great men and the rich men and the chief captains and the mighty men and every bomb and every free man hid themselves in the dens and in the rocks and the mountains. See, we're still expecting this event to happen where all of these people are all of a sudden going to realize, like it says down there in verse 17, for the great day of his wrath is come. Who shall be able to stand? This is when the whole world realizes, uh oh, the Bible is real. The Bible is true. And all this stuff is actually going on now. These events are, are expected to happen at the end of the sixth seal. Before we go on to the seventh seal, we'll just, just talk on this a little bit in Revelations chapter 8. Is because after what we have the seventh, or when we have the sixth seal events, this huge earthquake and everybody starts to wake up, is when you have this, um, well, what some people call the, um, these 144,000 individuals are actually called away into the wilderness and hid for a matter of three and a half years. And then you come over here to uh, chapter 8, verse 1. It starts talking about the seventh seal. It says, And when he had opened the seventh seal, there was silence in heaven about the space of a half an hour. And then all of a sudden they start blowing these trumpets. All right, so now let's come back over here. Right here, verse 50, he says, the seven stages represented by the Father himself, he is the end, the culmination of evolution. In him is the stage of grace, the seventh seal. All right, guys, this is the seven seals right here. This is what they are. This is how they work right here.
Now I'm not going to go into the timing of these trumpets because as we said when these is when these seals are actually closed have we actually seen these events so we don't know when these trumpets are actually going to blow then at those at that point are they going to blow at the beginning the middle or the end we can't really say anymore. All right, well, I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up, guys, and I um, hope you got something out of it. I believe you're going to end up doing this class again sometime in the future as we learn more information. So go ahead and hit that subscribe button so you can get that class as it comes out. And if you would, hit the like button if you got something out of it. And like I said, I know this class, it, it has um, errors in it. I don't know everything, and I'm trying to do this Bible study for myself and for anybody else who's trying to learn something. So here's a little bit of a contribution that we're making, and maybe you can add it to your understanding understanding maybe we can figure this thing out but if you did get anything out of it go ahead and hit that like button for me down there and like I said leave your comment and uh, and subscribe Shalom